Welcome back fellow aircraft builders and aviation enthusiasts. It's been a while since I've released a video. I've had a really busy holiday season here at the end of 2017 and 2018. Many, many things have taken me away from the project, but uh, I'm just getting back into it and hoping to start cranking out more videos and more productivity on the project for you. Today's video is going to be about using a router and router templates to cut out multiple part blanks for your project. You're going to use these techniques for things like wing ribs primarily, flapper on ribs, uh, elevator ribs and stuff like that. Those, those multiple parts where you're making multiple copies of them are where it's appropriate to use router cutting templates. I've detailed in previous videos how to actually make those templates, but this is the process you use to actually cut the material to final size using the router. It's going to be a two-part series. This first video is basically going to be setting up the cutting templates for use. I'm going to show you how to layer multiple sheets of aluminum together, clamp them tightly, pre-drill relief holes and tooling holes, and get those ready for cutting out on the router. The second part of this video is going to be the actual router cutting itself. This is footage that I shot a long time ago using my old camera equipment before I even had any good lighting here in the shop, and then I ended up losing the footage for many, many months. So I just finally found where it was located and wanted to get this video put together for you, even though it's kind of a vintage quality at this point. But the information is the important part, so I hope you find it useful. Let's get into it. So in other videos you've seen me uh, show revising a cutting template for my nose rib. This is for the main wing, the nose rib cutting template. This is one half of it. And I had to revise the flange area so that I came out with a good rib. Again, in the nose rib here, this is the part that we're looking for. And I had to do some sanding and some expansion on one of the dimensions to get the exact flange dimension that I wanted when I bend this part into shape. The way that you form that part is you start with a what's called a blank and so here you can see that I've got just a flat sheet of 25 thousandths 6061 T6 the cutting template is traced onto that and then I rough cut it with a pair of shears so this is the part that you end up with and we still need to cut this precisely to size using the cutting template now the way that we do that and remember I talked about before using the drill press to make sure that you're drilling your holes perfectly straight up and down with respect to your your material. I've got four pieces of aluminum stacked up. They're all rough cut and I've had to you know make sure that the piece of material is kind of centered around the cutting template because I don't want a situation where the material is underneath the cutting template and I miss an edge as I'm tracing around it. So you want to make sure that you have all your thicknesses of material, in this case four, is centered as best you can each piece on the cutting template itself. And what I'll do is with my quarter inch pilot bit using the tooling holes as a guide I'll drill down into this material after I've clamped it and I've got a drilling block underneath. So I'm going to actually clamp this together because it would be impossible for me to clamp the other side of the cutting template to this without having these drilled already. So I'm going to use one as a drill guide with the material clamped to it. I'll leave it clamped uh, as best I can for both holes and then uh, once those holes are drilled out I'll go ahead and use the uh, other cutting template rather and bolt them together in a sandwich. So you can see here what I've done is I've clamped the aluminum to the cutting template so that I can drill my pilot holes and all I've done is taken a couple of adjustable clamps here in the back. You can see just a couple of clamps. I had a C clamp and uh, I think that's a Harbor Freight clamp. Uh, I've just lightly clamped the material. It's not going to slip around too much. Normally when you're working with aluminum, especially if you're cutting large surfaces or thick metal, you definitely need to worry about the material catching. But, but something as simple as four, four little layers of uh, sheet you don't typically have to worry about. You do need a backing block though because the uh, bottom sheet of aluminum will have a tendency to blister out and will have to be significantly deburred if it's not if it doesn't deform the wood. So you do need some type of backing block underneath to drill into a sacrificial block. I only I recommend no more than say four sheets of 25 thousandths. Uh, you can get away with six sheets of 16 thousandths and five or six sheets of 20 thousandths but uh, generally speaking in the Zenith 750 
Uh, the bulk of your parts are going to either be made out of 16 thousandths for the ribs and the smaller structures and 25 thousandths for the rib structures and the wings and a few other places. So you, you can cut even more than that and I'll show you on the router in a minute how to flush cut this but I recommend no more than four thicknesses of 25 and six th thicknesses of 16 thousandths. It gives you a little bit better control especially when you're cutting and even when you're drilling you don't have to worry too much about uh, the drill biting in at the wrong place or kick back from the router quite as much. So I'm just going to hold this in place because I have these blocks and it's not going to have a tendency to walk around at all uh, the way that I'm drilling this. So I've got my hole lined up. I'm going to go ahead and just make a real quick drill through those four pieces of aluminum and work through. I make sure I go all the way down into the drilling block below, the sacrificial block, and uh, we didn't have any movement on these sheets whatsoever. And then I'll go ahead and do the same thing just by holding it in place for the nose hole. Again, same kind of deal. I'm wearing gloves. And you may not be able to tell in the video, but I am keeping my fingers and everything, you know, within uh, well out of reach of that drill bit. I probably got maybe two inches of clearance from that bit location. Right there because there was a little extra weight hanging off a, a clamping block would have prevented that from trying to walk back up the drill bit as I was holding it but it's not critical it's just a tooling hole uh, you want to keep it you know nice and not necessarily perfect you do want to keep it within spec on the uh, when you use your bolt that goes through the hole uh, that did elongate just a just a touch but again that's okay it's just a tooling hole there's nothing structural that's going to go through there so the second part of this is to take your other clamping or excuse me your other cutting template and you can see that I've countersunk or rather used a spade bit to bore out a little bit deeper holes in that I'll show you the reason for that in a moment when you're using a router to cut your your uh, material the cutting template has to sit flat on the surface of the router table if you're doing it that way if you're using a uh, if you're just using a handheld router and tracing around a form, you're going to want that form somehow clamped to the surface of the router uh, or the surface of the workbench that you're working on. So what I'm going to do is push these through. So now I've got my locating holes and because I use this as a template, these should in theory at least be quite, quite close to perfect without too much strain on the bolts one way or another. So we're just going to go right ahead and slip these through. Actually, I've got a piece I can't even got a piece I can't even use. There's a a big scratch that goes through there and that is a good way through the material. That's actually a scoring line from when I was cutting out another part, so I can't even use that one. So we're only going to use three because I only drilled three of them together. That's okay, I have lots to make. So now that we've got these three put together, we should be able to slide this down right on top of them. And that fits like it's supposed to, exactly perfect. And you see that I've got the uh, holding surface of these bolts. Um, protruding a little bit. I didn't buy short enough bolts. I originally made my cutting templates out of three-quarter inch plywood so the bolts that I had uh, were just fine. And uh, so what I'm gonna have to do is stack a few washers up and then I use um, wing nuts to hold those in place. So I'll be right back with those. Okay, so I've stacked three washers under the heads of these and I'm actually gonna snug them nice and tight. Now you might want to know why we're still at the drill press. I'll show you that in just a minute. You can see I've got my heads of my bolts here are either countersunk a little bit or, or flush with the bottom of this. This is so that when I put it on the router table it will slide around uninhibited. And you can just stack a few washers up to get the proper grip. Now on this particular part, because I'm folding a uh, right angle corner where there's a tight bend here, where this is going to be you have to relief this on the corner, otherwise you can develop, a, it's a stress riser, a place for a crack to develop. And so these 
these uh, cutting templates actually have those relief cuts drilled into them. Now without the material clamped in there, it's very difficult to drill those because they're on the edges. So again, I'll still hold this in place and drill these out. There's no backing block under that, but because it's right on the edge of the wood, you're not gonna bind against the whole of the wood. You're only going through the thickness of the material and it shouldn't climb up the hole on you, so then you end up with your nice little holes where you've got them. And now they're ready to be routed. And I'll be curious, I, uh, I wasn't as careful as I thought where those thicknesses are. I actually have one that's kind of farther into the area where it might impede on the wood, so I don't know if that's actually gonna cut perfectly flush or not. I guess we'll find out. I'm gonna tighten these down just a little bit more, get some more clamping force on them as best I can. You see there's a little bit of gap in there that's actually the um, metal uh, warpage a little bit kind of pushing against these cutting templates but for our purposes that'll still hold and we'll move the camera and show you the router setup. For more information about the Zenith Stull CH750 please visit Zenith Aircraft Company online at www.zenithair.net. If you liked this video please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Be sure to click on the notification bell to receive all the channel updates. For additional information on the project, check out my blog at gregsplane.blogspot.com. You can also contact me directly at gregsstolch750 at gmail.com. As always, thanks for watching and good luck with your projects.